مولاي صل وسلم دائما دائما I'd like to start with the ayah of the Quran. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ya ayyuha al-nasu inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu inna akramakum inda Allahi atqakum. The ayah is known to many of you and the beauty of this ayah is it puts everything in perspective where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing humanity, the creation, Ya ayyuhal nas, not Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu. The khitab here, Ya ayyuhal nas. With, if it's the Ya ayyuhal nas, it means everybody. Muslim, not Muslim, everybody. Ya ayyuhal nas, inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha. We have created you from, and you became males and females. Wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qabail. And then you formed you are formed into Qabail, Jazakallah Khair Sidi. Wa Shu'ub and nations, Lita'arafu, so you can get to know each other, so you can get to learn, so you can get to cooperate, so you can get to do things, so you can get to build to build your future, to build your dunya and to build your akhirah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends the ayah by saying, Inna akramakum inda Allah atqaqum. The most honorable amongst you, and it means who is you? Males or females, nations and tribes. The most honorable is the one who has the highest piety. This ayah of course comes to destroy <coughs> the idols of the pre-Islamic era, which considered the females or the female being at best an object. Sometimes not even that. Yani, the uh, Jahili poet says this. The Jahili means pre-Islamic. He says, al afdalu shay'in lil banat. Death is the best thing for females. Kill them. Wa yurwa bi min al makrumat. In fact, <coughs> he says in his poetry, it is narrated that death for them is an honorable thing. And it's a good thing to do. Makrumat, makruma. Alam tara rahman azza smuhu ja'ala na'ash bijambil banat. The stars, the set of stars, the small bear and the big bear, you probably know them. In the Arabic language, they're called, they're not called the small bear and the big bear, they're called na'ash al banat. Na'ash means coffin, banat means girls. As of the Arabs in the old days, when they looked at the set of the star, it's resembled to them a small coffin of the girls that they used to make it on that. So the poet is saying, haven't you seen the stars? The stars say, Nash, the coffin of the girls. So since the stars say the coffin of the girls, the best thing is to kill them. Taban al-Islam came with this idea now that, wait a minute, dhakar or untha, whether you're a male or a female, yeah. Inna akramakum inda Allah atqakum. The most honorable amongst you is the one who has most taqwa, most piety. And therefore you see in Nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And I would like to encourage you when you hear the name of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to make salah and salam on him sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So we can all get rewards and beautify our majlis. So that we beautify our majlis with a salah ala Nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Al-Islam wants to show us that females have been kamula min al-nisa. Al-Nabi al-A'zam says, among the females you have perfections. And he talks about these four. Asiya bintu Muzahim, Maryam bintu Imran, Khadija bintu Khuwaylad, wa Fatima bintu Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Al-Islam wa Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wants to show us that Females are actually makers of history. Then, no, there are some people who watch things happen and some people make 
things happen. Islam and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wants to show us that females played a role in making things happen, change the face of history. Therefore, uh, the Shair Ahmad Shawqi, the Egyptian poet, Rahimahullah, he said in his poetry, he said, Al-Ummu Madrasatun in a'adattaha a'adatta sha'ban tayyib al-a'raqi. The um, the mother, is a school, is a university. If it's well, if it's well prepared, then you have just prepared a nation that's destined to prosperity. Taban, we will try to go through the seerah briefly of these four important figures. And like I said before, I don't think I will be doing justice to them, talking about them for 40 minutes or so. But we will try to take some glimpse and scenes from their seerah. So we can see what kind of personalities are they. What did they go through? What did they live through? Al-Ala, Abu Amr ibn Al-Ala, one of the people in the Jahiliya, he told his sons on his deathbed, he's dying, he gathered his sons, he told them, I did you a great favor after you were born by raising you properly, obviously. And I also, I did you a great favor even before you were born. And I said, Father, okay, we understand. You did us a great favor after we were born because you were teaching us and you were educating us. But what do you mean before, I, before we were born? He says, I chose for you a good mother. <coughs> and therefore, the poet, he says, وَأَوَّلُ خُبْثِ الْمَاءِ خُبْثُ تُرَابِهِ وَأَوَّلُ خُبْثِ الْقَوْمِ خُبْثُ الْمَنَاكِحِ Which means the people who have really no manners, خبيث, والعياذ بالله, is look at their origins. What kind of education they got at home? What kind of environment was it at home? Because people learn these things at home. Any biologists, those of you who are biologists, you know, they teach you in biology 101 that a human being is a product of his environment or her environment. The environment teaches you to be a decent person. The environment teaches you to be a good person. The environment teaches you to be an honest person. Al-Um, the father, the mother, the brother, the sister. You're saying, well, my sister doesn't raise me. Yes, she does. Sure she does. The aunt, the uncle, that's the environment. You all know the story and I don't want to go too much in these things, but I just want to try to have an, a key to, to, to introduce the topic to us. But you all know the story of the one who was selling yogurt, the seller of the milk. في عهد سيدنا عمر رضي الله عنه سيدنا عمر is doing his night shift خليفة does night shifts yeah in, the, in those days يعني الخليفة الراشد has work also nights nowadays there's days off and all these things everything and salaries and privileges the privilege for الخلفاء الراشدين was serving the ummah of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم that was the privilege he was doing his night rounds. Those of you in hospitals, so that makes sense to you. You do your night rounds, why? So you can check on the patients, take their vital signs, make sure they're alive, and if they're not, what do you do? You give him support. This was the job of Sayyidina Umar He went at night doing his night rounds, and he overheard, he couldn't help but to overhear a conversation. Mother is telling her daughter, place where they sell yogurt, uh, yogurt or laban, yani halib, or milk. <coughs> the mother is telling, and you remember that the houses were from mud and clay. So it's not that, not like nowadays people have palaces. And you, the house was a room, maybe you have nowadays half of a room and with a little thing, and a mud and clay, thank God, in the story. Assalamu alaikum. This was it. Huh? He overhears a conversation, not by choice, but he overhears that conversation where the mother is telling the daughter, well, you know, we have some uh, milk, why don't you add some water? So tomorrow in the morning we can sell more, the quantity increases. 
The daughter tells the mother. Who's educating who? The daughter is educating the mother now. She tells her, but, oh mother, don't you know that Omar, the Khalifa, will punish us if we know we're cheating? You're cheating, you're adding water to, uh, to, to milk, that's cheating. And you know that's punishable by the Khalifa. The mother says, well, the Khalifa is not here to see us. So, understand. He's not here. The daughter says, but mother, if the Khalifa is not here to see us, the Lord of the Khalifa is here to see us. Rabbu Umar Yarana. If Umar doesn't see us, but the Rabb of Umar sees us. Sayyidina Umar went back to his home, went to his kids, brought his kids, all of them, at age, uh, marriage, marriage age. He says, look, there's two choices for you. You either marry her or I will marry her, that daughter. So Asim, his son, Asim bin Umar. Uh, the choice is obvious. And no, these are the qualities. This is the one who will make a generation. Sayyidina Umar was looking ahead. Years and years, you're saying, oh, well, you know, he, no, no. he didn't see how she looked like. He didn't ask, what tribe do you come from? What job does your father hold? How many degrees does your mother have? What kind of car do you have parked in front of you? And how many rooms is your house? And what kind of citizenship do you carry with you? Other than the other one. Huh? He went to his home because he saw in that female, he saw the nucleus to build nation. A nucleus to build a society that's constructive, that's prosperous, that's advanced. He says, you either marry her or I will marry her. Asam said, I will. I'm ready. I don't, you know, young age, you know. Huh? Asam married her. Asam bin Umar. They got married. He got married to the daughter of the milk seller. They have a daughter now, Asim, with her has a daughter named Layla. Layla is the mother of Umar bin Abdul Aziz. Do you see the investment? Build nations. We're going to talk about four of these females, such characters, such high characters. And I have to admit, and confess to you up front that when I looked at these four characters, I was overwhelmed. Asiya bintu Muzahim, Maryam bint Amran, Khadija bintu Khuwailid, Fatima bintu Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I was overwhelmed and I was fearful of standing in front such as such mountains because those females were human beings that were in touch in one way or another, or they were educating in one way or another, help praise, I mean, in one way or another, one of the prophets, the most prominent prophets of Allah Rabbul Alameen. They lived in a house where earth touched heaven and where the communication between earth and heaven was ongoing. They lived in a house where the wahi was vibrant and alive. They lived in a house that changed the way things are in the world. All these four women. So, I hope you excuse me and you share these feelings with me, standing in humbleness and respect in front of such personalities of females that the world has not seen a replacement to in that caliber, of course, there are many, but in that kind of caliber. We start, of course, we'll start with Asiya. Asiya bintu Muzahim. رضي الله تعالى عنها <coughs> The queen She is a queen She was a queen And she is a queen still She is a queen in our hearts But she was a queen Her husband Was Pharaoh Pharaoh himself Of course the key to her personality she was not any ordinary woman. She's not one of the any ordinary. She was a woman who gave us an example 
that is ongoing till the day of judgment. An example, she put actually, and she wrote with her story, the highest of examples of sacrifice. And the highest of examples of belief and faith. And among the highest of examples in patience and persistence, sabr. So much that that led her to abandon the throne. How many people are ready to give up a throne? The kursi. I, I, always there's a joke, I always say it's okay to say that. I'm not going to mention the personality name. But they, they, they say there's some person that always has tasbih and, you know, going like this all the time. And, you know, they're not people of supposedly of doing these things. And so they're saying, they're asking, what are you, what are you saying? Uh, and the person replies, well, uh, I am reciting Ayat al-Kursi. But they're saying, wait a minute, Ayat al-Kursi takes a long time to be recited. You're going like this. Well, she replies, I'm just saying Kursi, 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 Kursi.